How dare you come in my crack house? Holy crap. That's like a triple feat. Check that out. So as you guys can see, there's two rounds trying to go in the chamber, then the, the round from the mag's trying to come up as well. I think that may be my first triple feed malfunction I've ever seen. Impressive, very impressive high point. You continue to set the bar as high as possible. Look at that thing, it's still stuck in there. That's, that's insane. All right, let's try again. Yeah. First round nose dive. All right, let's try one handed. Welcome back, everybody. It's a lovely spring day, so I figured we'd do this review outside instead of in front of a green screen. So, the gun we we're going over is this gun right here. This is the High Point CF380, of course with the compensator because 380s require compensators um but no uh so that is the gun we're going over obviously the main selling point of all high point firearms is the fact that they're relatively inexpensive and from what i read online people say they are generally reliable this is the second high point that i've got in for review and unfortunately i have to report to you that's absolutely not true in my experience i've had again two high points in for review Neither of them has ran well. My C9, which you guys have probably seen that review of, it's a relatively popular video, um, absolutely not reliable. However, this one here, much less reliable. So it got worse. Um, right now, this pistol has about 450 rounds through it. And the reason it doesn't have more is because I've just been so annoyed with how poorly it's run. Um, I went before coming out here to actually shoot this video. I went back and actually watched every round I put through it on video. And um, it only made it through two magazines out of the 450 rounds without at least one malfunction. Almost all magazines had multiple malfunctions. And uh, the ammo we used in it was um, some LAX ammo reloads, some Fiocchi, um, just ball stuff, some Fiocchi XTP, and then also some federal ball ammo. And it didn't seem to matter. It all ran equally terribly. So unfortunately, reliability on this one so far is a no-go, but we'll walk through the features of it anyway. The pistol does ship with an eight round magazine in the gun right now. You see the Extendo mag, which can be purchased separately. They are factory high point mags. However, uh, Pro Mag makes mags for them as well. And actually from what I've heard, the Pro Mags tend to be more reliable than the um, 380 or nine millimeter mags from high point, at least again, from what I've read online, I haven't tried them out though, so I can't verify that. Um, but anyway, uh, continuing on up on the back strap there, we do have some serrations. And then on the front, we have horizontal serrations as well. Uh, this is actually one thing I've pointed out on much more expensive handguns that they should be like this. If you're not going to do checkering, because I understand it's an increased expense, your actual serration should be horizontal reason being. The gun, when it recoils, recoils like that. And a lot of like SIGs and old Berettas have vertical serrations, which does absolutely nothing to control recoil. I'm um, so good on high point for that. Uh, the grips that come on the pistol are uh, just basic plastic, not a lot of traction on there. If you're actually shooting this out in hot temperatures or if you have blood in your hands or anything like that, the pistol's probably going to jump around a little bit on you. Obviously at 380, not too much at all, but there will be some movement. The actual safety there does work. It has both a thumb safety, as you guys can see there, that would be the safe position. Then it also has a magazine disconnect safety. So verifying the gun is unloaded, I point it down, the gun will not fire. However, if I take our said magazine, it will actually fire. So it has a bunch of safeties on there. Uh, trigger on the gun, not great. Uh, as I said with my high point C9, it's it's kind of weird. So if you actually measure it, it's going to tell you that it's about an 11 pound trigger, at least on my scale that we measured it with, which is a Lyman trigger pull gauge. However, it doesn't feel like that. It feels much lighter. But one thing that's really weird about it is that, let me see if I can get closer for you guys and it'll get focused. Yep. Okay. So what you see there is it's actually hinging on this little um, bar at the top there where it meets the frame. So what ends up happening is there's simply no way to pull this trigger straight to the rear. You actually have to pull it down. Um, that's the only way it'll function. So you have to pull down while you're actually depressing the trigger. So probably not an ideal setup. 
uh, for accuracy. Uh, moving out front, you guys can see there is no accessory rail light. However, I've seen some aftermarket options out there for folks that are looking uh, for that. It's something you can do. Uh, they sell this, of course, both with and without the compensator. I went for the compensated model from the folks over at Big Data Unlimited simply because I thought it looked uh, funny. And <laughs> sure enough, it does. It lived up to their name. And uh, before going on any further, I want to Thank the folks over at Big Data Unlimited for sending this out. Uh, that's where we picked it up. And uh, they're supporting the channel, and they're also giving you guys a lot of great deals. Um, at this point, there's a bunch of people that are already signed up for Big Data Unlimited, so you can read different reviews online. Uh, but what you'll see is that, generally speaking, they give you a lot of good uh, options, especially for the price that they're charging. And again, for those who don't know, uh, Big Data Unlimited is essentially like Costco for guns. So you have to be a member in order to see all their prices. Their prices are distributed direct pricing, and then they make their profit, as all businesses have to make profit, from the subscription. So the first month right now, anyway, is 99 cents. After that, it's $9.99. There'll be a link in the video description to sign up. Anyway, moving on, our slide here is this gigantic massive thing that you see right here. And this pistol, I should mention, unloaded weighs in at 29 and a half ounces on my scale. Um, you see we do have some serrations here at the rear. Uh, they claim that this uh, piece here on the side that makes it two-tone is chrome finished. Maybe. It could be a matte chrome. It doesn't look chrome to me, but I suppose it's possible. But the reason the slide is so big and massive is because it's a blowback pistol. So what that means is there's no like browning style locking action or anything like that. It is straight blowback. The round fires and then the pressure from the round causes the gigantic slide to go back and then it goes forward. So it's a very, very simple design. Uh, disassembly is kind of annoying. If you guys haven't seen my How to Clean and Lubricate, a high point video, definitely recommend checking it out. I walk through the entire process and I should also point out this gun was cleaned and lubricated prior to our shooting here. So very simple uh, design overall. Our sights are three dot affair. On the rear we have two dots. It is uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. And on the front we have a built-in ramp sight with a little uh, yellow, it looks like when you look at it, a yellow, um, there's a word I'm looking for, rectangle. Geez, geometry teacher would not be impressed, but it looks like a rectangle. However, when you actually have it lined up, it looks like a square due to the angle, obviously, that you're looking down the sights. Those are the details on the gun. We already talked about reliability, not super stellar. Uh, Price-wise, though, it definitely is well-priced, I suppose you could say, so it's very affordable. And like I said in other reviews I've done on sort of affordable guns, um, I like the fact that companies like High Point and many others are trying to put out guns at a reasonable price point that somebody, regardless of how much money they make, their income level, uh, can use to defend themselves. I think that's a good thing, and I think we need more of that in America because the more people, obviously, armed, uh, the better off we are as a society, and not everyone should have to pay $500 for a reliable gun. Again, that's what High Point is trying to do in my Two examples, that has not been the case, and that, uh, again, stands true for this gun. Now, one thing I will say is that every single time, the first round, if it fed once we got it to feed, because sometimes it would hang up, once it was in the chamber, it would always fire. So if you needed one round, you'd get it. Um, in terms of reliability, that's one of the good things I could say about it. Uh, again, guys, though, uh, at this point, this is going to be a hard uh, non-recommend on my end. And if you look around right now, again, this is going to be, depending on where you purchase it, again, we will put a link to Big Daddy Unlimited. It'll be under $200. Some people say you can find high points new for $100. I've never seen that, uh, at least not in 10 years anyway, since they were a different brand back then. Um, but anyway, it's going to be under $200. So if you look around the market right now, you can find some other guns that are pretty darn reliable for similar price points. So like, take a look at the Ruger LCP, for example, right now. You can find it under $200. Um, there's some, uh, like even Taurus revolvers will get down right to the $200 price point if you guys look for sales. Now, I'm sure most of folks who are picking up high point aren't you know, browsing the internet looking for sales. I get that. They're walking into their local store. They're like, I need something now because you know my boyfriend's threatening me or something like that. And that's why they tend to go with these guns. However, hopefully if any of you are in that situation who are watching this video right now, um, if that's you, I would lean and uh, go with something else, again, based on my personal experience. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions about the gun, by all means, post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. That is, generally speaking, the best place to get in touch with me. I respond to all the messages I get over there. It may take me a couple days, but I get to all of them. Um, on YouTube, Full 30 and elsewhere, I don't always see them, so I simply can't always respond to them. So that's the place to get me. You can also sign up for my email list over there at the sign-up tab, or if you don't want to use Facebook for whatever reason, you can sign up for my email list over at Mr. 
mrgunsandgear.com. I send out an email every week with the videos of the week, which is always three or more. And I also send out the deals of the week. So hopefully you guys will see some good deals. Maybe save yourself some money as well along the way. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're new to the channel here and you like what you saw, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.